Hey everyone, you're here with the Castaway Couple. And welcome back to part two of a two-part series. Now, if you caught part one of our series on how much you should spend on a house in the Philippines, you already know that we covered quite a lot of ground from progress on our own house to some key considerations that you should keep in mind when investing your money in a home in the Philippines. Now, before we dive into today's topic, there are a couple of things that I just want to address. So first off, I re-watched our most recent video, which we uploaded just a couple of days ago, and I realized that there were a few things I said that didn't really sit well with me. Um, so let's clear things up real quick. In the last video, I mentioned not buying cheap appliances, um, and later I talked about Filipinos not being able to afford homes like ours and suggested building to a Western standards. Now, whether or not this upset anyone, I wanted to address it up front. So, so far we haven't received any negative comments and maybe no one even noticed, but look, I wasn't happy with how I delivered those points and I feel that I have a moral obligation to keep my content as fair and accurate as possible. And as you guys know, lately I've been trying to condense our videos into more digestible lengths. And this is a pretty big learning curve for me. So instead of articulating myself, let's say effectively, my brain just sort of goes into syntax error. <laughs> so let's clear the air. I definitely didn't mean to sound demeaning or belittling. And despite how it may have came across, I wasn't saying that if you don't buy premium brands like Bosch, everything else is garbage. There are many, many fantastic products at literally half the price that we spent that are just as robust and reliable. So I think the key is to do your research and invest in what gives you the best value for your money because we work hard for it. Um, and yes, not everyone can afford these appliances in particular, but remember, like we can't afford top tier brands like Miele or Wolf or what else uh, in those Beverly Hills mansions, Gaganau for example. Um, and then next I also said that most Filipinos won't be able to afford a home like this. Again, poor delivery on my part. There are plenty of wealthy Filipinos with homes that are much grander than ours alone there in Ormoc. Um, there are doctors, there are lawyers, there are seafarers, vessel captains, um, business owners and OFWs who can easily build or buy homes just like ours, if not better. Um, so our approach was simply based on having a set budget and knowing what we could achieve within that. Now on that note, I just want to give a big shout out to one of our viewers. Brett, mate, you're an absolute legend. Brett commented. And we absolutely hear you. And it's funny because I know the point that Brett's trying to make here. The funny thing is that this video was recorded as part of the first one. So I just did one long recording and I've just split it up into two parts just to keep these videos concise. So technically I'd already addressed Brett's comment before even uploading. And I think the point he was trying to make is unless you're prepared to wait a long, long. time to sell your property, you might face <laughs> And this is crucial to consider when building in the Philippines. So once again, Brett, thanks for your insights. And on that note, guys, go ahead, grab a cup of coffee. <sighs> Settle in if you haven't already. Make sure to hit like, share and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future updates. Now, let's dive into the most important things that you need to consider before building your house in the Philippines. Look, guys, it really depends on what you want to do with your property. Now, your goals for the property will ultimately dictate how much you spend. Uh, if it's intended, let's say, to be a holiday home where you'll spend only a few weeks a year, you might opt for a modest investment. On the other hand, if you're planning to live, retire, whatever it is you want to do there, but if it's going to be full time, you might want to splurge a little bit more on luxurious items just to enhance your living experience. And if your goal is maybe to renovate, 
and make the largest possible profit in the shortest amount of time, it's crucial to thoroughly research the market, right? This includes understanding the cost of materials, things like resale values and sales trends in the area. Additionally, a big one to consider is how long it typically takes to sell homes at various price points in that location. Each of these factors will significantly influence your spending decision and ensure that your investment aligns with your personal and financial goals. The first thing I think would be extremely important to draw on are some comparisons between the functionality and basic principles of the Australian property market versus the Philippines property market. Before we even begin on deciding how much of our hard-earned money we're actually comfortable investing into a home or life in the Philippines. I just want to say that I'm not here to argue which one is better or worse. My aim is just simply to provide a reference point for comparison and of course being an Australian myself and considering that this content is tailored to a similar audience. I think it makes perfect sense to use the Australian market as a benchmark. So let's take a look at some of these key factors which will significantly help us in making our decision. So in Australia, property values are pretty consistent. Let's take for example a house in Melbourne CBD and surrounding suburbs, which is almost always guaranteed to appreciate steadily over time and that's primarily thanks to detailed data and important market trends. Now on the other hand, in the Philippines, you might find a house, let's say, in a prime location in Manila that in theory should sell for quite a lot. But because there's no real standard market analysis, it might not fetch the expected price, at least not the price that you had in your head. Um, and conversely, a property in a less desirable area might surprise you with a higher resale value because the market's just so unpredictable. And I'll unpack this a little bit in just a couple of minutes. Now, this is a big one. In Australia, buying and selling property is pretty straightforward. You know there are strict laws protecting both buyers and sellers, and real estate agents are licensed professional. Now, however, in the Philippines, it's a bit of the wild, wild west. There aren't strict regulations and almost anyone can become an agent. So this generally means that the buying process can be, I was going to say a bit, but let's just say it can be a hell of a lot riskier and far, far less transparent. Now, touch wood, in unfortunate circumstances, you could find yourself dealing with unexpected legal issues because there's no standardized procedure. Now, I'm not saying that things can't go south here in Australia too, although we are that way inclined on the compass. You come from a land down under. Anyway, it is far more seldom found thanks to the strict policies and procedures that we have in place. Now, to my fellow Aussies, I'm sure that most of you have heard of this huge marketing company called CoreLogic. And for those of you that haven't, this company is a leading global property information analytics and data enabled solutions provider. The company offers comprehensive suites of products and services designed to meet the needs of real estate professionals, particularly. Um, also financial institutions, government agencies and other businesses involved, particularly in property markets. Um, and they provide detailed market insights, helping you make informed decisions. So for instance, you can see how a neighborhood's property values have changed over the years, over a course of time. Um, and in the Philippines, without such tools, you're often flying blind. So for example, as I mentioned in my first key point, like a small rundown house in a well-connected area might actually be significantly undervalued, while a nicer looking property in a less accessible area might be overpriced because there's no real reliable data to compare it to. So. A price based purely on home features and aesthetics can greatly impact this growing inconsistency in the Philippine property values and considerations such as, such as access to schools, public transport, hospitals and general recreational amenities etc etc don't always impact the property's values as strongly as they should. So in essence, going back to that first key point, let's say one might have an average looking property in a desirable area 
which should be worth a lot more than a great looking property in a far less desirable area and they may still miss out on an appropriate sale value simply due to the lack of this level of data analysis that we have here in Australia. And in the provinces, well, guys, you can just forget about it altogether. It's a real no holds barred cage match out there. So as of late, in Australia, the sales process is most often quick and efficient. It always has been, but even more so now. Like a house can go from listing to sold in literally a matter of days. And that's thanks to a mainly a robust legal framework and efficient process. Now, on the other hand, in the Philippines, selling a property can take months, if not even years, which I've seen on a lot of YouTube channels, uh, especially if you're looking to get a fair value for what you've built or what you've paid for. So the lack of this streamlined procedure and these protections means that you might face delays and complications which make it a much, much more drawn out affair. So, here in Oz, real estate agents are most often than not very well qualified and they employ sophisticated marketing strategies from high quality online listings to professional open homes. Uh, in contrast, in the Philippines, marketing is often limited to Facebook posts and basic online listings. And since there are no stringent qualifications for agents, you might end up with someone who doesn't quite have the expertise to market your property effectively, which can significantly impact your sale. So I'm sure that it comes as no surprise to anyone that Jan and I have been very eagerly watching a lot of different expat channels about living in the Philippines. And being one of those channels ourselves, we've seen a wide range of opinions and different different kinds of advice from different people. And honestly, I think it can be quite overwhelming and at times even disheartening for anyone who's planning a move there. And I have to say, like each channel does present very compelling and valid points, but it's crucial to remember that all of these perspectives are shaped by personal experiences, right? These are the experiences that these individuals have gone through and they're sharing that. So no one knows your situation better than you do and ultimately, it's up to you to make the most informed decision that's gonna fit your circumstances the best. So I think the ultimate answer to how much should you spend on a house in the Philippines really is it depends. It depends on your financial situation, on your relationship status, and a variety of other factors. And honestly, primarily, it all has to do surrounding your long-term goals. So while we agree with the advice given by all the other YouTubers, we also have to disagree at the same time. And I think it's just everybody sharing their experiences from their points of view, which is very important. But at the end of the day, some aspects of your life might align with theirs, while others might be completely and utterly different. So to sum it all up, the question of how much should you spend on a house in the Philippines really boils down to your unique financial situation, your personal preferences, and of course, your long-term goals. Whether you're aiming for a cozy, bungalow or a luxury mansion, make sure that your decisions bring you happiness and most importantly, peace of mind. Guys, once again, thank you so much for tuning into our channel. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and drop a comment below with your thoughts or your questions. We really love hearing from you guys about your experiences and your advice. And don't forget to check out our other videos for more tips and insights on living the dream in the Philippines. Guys, this is the Castaway Couple. We'll see you next time. Uh, sharing their experience and important.